Unit One. Leisure activities. Page six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Check out this book, Fop. My mini guide to dog training. Sounds great. Max will like it too. Last weekend we learned some tricks. I love to watch him. It's so much fun. Have you found your craft kit? Yes, I found this one. It's got everything: beads, stickers, wool, buttons. I don't know. It'll take all my savings. But it's right up your street. Nick, what's that? It's a CD of Vietnamese folk songs. I'll listen to it tonight. And you'll be able to improve your Vietnamese. Ha ha! Not sure about that, but I think I'll enjoy listening to the melodies. Look at the language website I sent you. It'll help you learn Vietnamese more easily. Yes, I liked reading Doraemon comics while I was learning Japanese. Stop reading comics. I'll bring you my favourite short story this Sunday when we play football. Sorry, but we have to hurry. Mum and Dad are waiting. We need to buy some tools to build a new house for Max this weekend. Unit one. Page seven. Getting started. Activity two. Find words or phrases in the box to describe the photos. Then, listen to check your answers. One. Playing computer games. Two. Playing beach games. Three. Doing DIY. Four. Texting. Five. Visiting museums. Six. Making crafts. Unit one. Page nine. A closer look. Two. Activity two. Tick the appropriate box. Then, listen to check. One. I love eating spicy food. I love to eat spicy food. Two. Jane enjoys running. Three. Feng detests doing DIY. Four. I prefer reading poetry. I prefer to read poetry. Five. Do you fancy watching TV? Unit one. Page nine. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Complete the words under the pictures with br or pr. Listen to check your answers and repeat. One. Apricot. Two. Bridge. Three. Bracelet. Four. Bread. Five. Princess. Six. President. Seven. Present. Eight. Broccoli.
Unit One. Page Nine. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity Six. Listen and repeat. One. She loves making apricot jam. Two. My dad likes making bread in his free time. Three. Hien. Is our club president. Four. Mai keeps all her bracelets in a beautiful box. Five. You will need a brush if you want to paint your room. Six. This is a wonderful present. Thanks so much. Unit One. Page thirteen. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the radio program and answer the questions. Program, we'll share with you some cool ways to hang out with your best friends after a busy week at school. Basically, you can hang out indoors or outdoors. If you like staying indoors, ask your parents if you can invite one or two friends over. Make some popcorn. Watch a movie. It's more comfortable than going to the cinema. Or if you're feeling creative, you can make crafts together. You'll feel satisfied once you finish something. If you fancy being outdoors, play some sports together. Football, badminton, biking—you name it. Or it can simply be a relaxing walk in the park. All these activities are good for your physical health. Do you prefer something more exciting? Go downtown and do some people watching. It's fun. If you like something more organised, go to cultural centres, libraries, and museums. Educate yourself while having fun. Unit One. Page thirteen. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again and complete the table. Week's program, we'll share with you some cool ways to hang out with your best friends after a busy week at school. Basically, you can hang out indoors or outdoors. If you like staying indoors, ask your parents if you can invite one or two friends over. Make some popcorn, watch a movie. It's more comfortable than going to the cinema. Or if you're feeling creative, you can make crafts together. You'll feel satisfied once you finish something. If you fancy being outdoors, play some sports together. Football, badminton, biking—you name it. Or it can simply be a relaxing walk in the park. All these activities are good for your physical health. Do you prefer something more exciting? Go downtown and do some people watching. It's fun. If you like something more organised, go to cultural centres, libraries, and museums. Educate yourself while having fun.
Unit Two. Life in the countryside. Page sixteen. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Win speaking. Hi, Win. How's your stay there? Nick. Hi. Well, it's more exciting than I expected. What are you doing? Lots of things. It's harvest time, so we help load the rice onto buffalo-drawn carts, ride it home, and dry it. Have you ever ridden a cart? No, but I'd like to. And sometimes I go herding the buffaloes with the boys. You've made new friends. Yeah, right on my first day. They came and took me to the paddy fields to fly kites. Where can you buy a kite in the countryside? The people here don't buy kites; they make them. My grandfather's made me the largest, most colourful kite I've ever had. It looks great up there in the sky. Oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> I guess I live more happily here, and there's still a lot more to explore. Sounds great. And everything seems to move more slowly here than in the city. I wish I could join. Unit two. Page eighteen. A closer look. One. Activity one. Listen and repeat the words. One. Slow. Two. Colorful. Three. Friendly. Four. Hard. Five. Brave. Six. Boring. Seven. Inconvenient. Eight. Fast. Nine. Peaceful. Ten. Nomadic. Unit two. Page nineteen. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen and repeat the words. Pay attention to the initial clusters. One. Blackberry. Two. Clothing. Three. Climb. Four. Blind. Five. Click. Six. Clay. Seven. Bloom. Eight. Blossom. Nine. Clock. Ten. Clear. Unit two. Page nineteen. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Listen and circle the word you hear. One. Blame. Two. Blast. Three. Blue. Four. Clock. Five. Close. 
Unit 2. Page 19. Pronunciation. Activity 7. Listen to the sentences and repeat. 1. The wind is blowing so hard. 2. These people have climbed to the top of the mountain. 3. The tree is in full bloom. 4. Look at the clear blue sky. 5. Blind people can read with braille. Unit 2 Page 23 Skills 2 Listening Activity 1 Listen to a boy talking about changes in his village and tick the changes he mentions. I live in a mountain village. My parents often tell me stories about their life in the past. It's not much like the village I can see nowadays. Some villagers now live in brick houses instead of earthen ones. Our houses are better equipped with electric fans and TVs. Thanks to the TV, we now know more about life outside our village. We don't use oil lamps anymore. We have electric lights which are much brighter. More villagers are using motorcycles for transport instead of riding a horse or walking. We village children no longer have to walk a long way and cross a stream to get to school, which is dangerous in the rainy season. Now there's a new school nearby. We also have more visitors from the city. They come to experience our way of life. Unit 2 Page 23 Skills 2 Listening Activity 2 Listen again and say if the sentences are true or false. I live in a mountain village. My parents often tell me stories about their life in the past. It's not much like the village I can see nowadays. Some villagers now live in brick houses instead of earthen ones. Our houses are better equipped with electric fans and TVs. Thanks to the TV, we now know more about life outside our village. We don't use oil lamps anymore. We have electric lights which are much brighter. More villagers are using motorcycles for transport instead of riding a horse or walking. We village children no longer have to walk a long way and cross a stream to get to school, which is dangerous in the rainy season. Now there's a new school nearby. We also have more visitors from the city. They come to experience our way of life. Unit 2 Page 23 Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Listen again and answer the questions in no more than four words.
I live in a mountain village. My parents often tell me stories about their life in the past. It's not much like the village I can see nowadays. Some villagers now live in brick houses instead of earthen ones. Our houses are better equipped with electric fans and TVs. Thanks to the TV, we now know more about life outside our village. We don't use oil lamps anymore. We have electric lights which are much brighter. More villagers are using motorcycles for transport instead of riding a horse or walking. We village children no longer have to walk a long way and cross a stream to get to school, which is dangerous in the rainy season. Now there's a new school nearby. We also have more visitors from the city. They come to experience our way of life. Unit three. Peoples of Vietnam. Page twenty six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Good morning. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, we'd like to know something about the cultural groups of Vietnam. Right. Is it true that there are fifty-four ethnic groups in our country? Exactly. How interesting! I'm curious about them now. Which group is the largest? Well, the Viet or King have the largest number of people, accounting for about eighty-six percent of the population. Fifty-three others are called ethnic minority peoples. And where do they live? All over the country. Some groups like the Thai, Hmong. Yao live mostly in the mountainous regions in the north, and the Cham, Khmer, Ere live in the central highlands and some southern provinces. I see. And do they speak their own languages? Yes, and they have their own ways of life and customs and traditions. That's awesome. I'd like to find out more about them. Okay. I'll show you round and tell you some interesting. Unit three. Page twenty-eight. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen. And repeat the following words: skateboard, stamp, speech, display, first, station, instead. Crisp. School. Basket. Space. Task. Unit three. Page twenty-eight. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen again, and put them in the right column according to their sounds. Skateboard. Stamp. Speech. Display. First. Station. Instead. Crisp. School. Basket. Space. Task.
Unit three. Page thirty three. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the passage and tick true or false. Five coloured sticky rice is an important traditional dish of many ethnic minorities in the northern mountainous regions. People call the dish five coloured sticky rice because it has five colours: red, yellow, green, purple, and white. The things that create the colours are not chemicals, but natural roots and leaves. The five colours of the dish represent five elements of life, according to Vietnamese beliefs. Yellow is earth, red is fire, green is plants, white is metal, and purple or black is water. People believe that these five elements create harmony between heaven and earth. Five coloured sticky rice is usually made and enjoyed at Tet, in festivals and ceremonies, on special occasions, and whenever the family has guests. Unit three. Page thirty-three. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again, and complete the sentences. Five coloured sticky rice is an important traditional dish of many ethnic minorities in the northern mountainous regions. People call the dish five coloured sticky rice because it has five colours: red, yellow, green, purple, and white. The things that create the colours are not chemicals, but natural roots and leaves. The five colours of the dish represent five elements of life, according to Vietnamese beliefs. Yellow is earth. Red is fire, green is plants, white is metal, and purple or black is water. People believe that these five elements create harmony between heaven and earth. Five coloured sticky rice is usually made and enjoyed at Tet, in festivals and ceremonies, on special occasions, and whenever the family has guests. Unit four. Our customs and traditions. Page thirty-eight. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Today we're going to learn about customs and traditions. Do you think they're the same? I think they're different, but it's hard to explain how. In my opinion, a custom is something that has become an accepted way of doing things, and a tradition is something we do that is special and is passed down through the generations. Yes, spot on. Give me an example of a custom. My family has this custom of eating dinner at seven p.m. sharp. Really? Yes, we have to be at the dinner table on time. That's interesting. How about a tradition, Fum? We have a family tradition of visiting the pagoda on the first day of every lunar month. You're kidding! No, no, we've followed this tradition for generations. You've mentioned family, but what about social customs and traditions, Nick? 
Well, in the UK, there are lots of customs for table manners. For example, we have to use a knife and fork at dinner. Then there's a British tradition of having afternoon tea at 4 p.m. Sounds lovely. Now, for homework, you should find information about a custom or tradition. You're doing many presentations next week. Unit four. Page forty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Complete the words under the pictures with spr or str. Then listen. And repeat. One. Straw. Two. Street. Three. Spring. Four. Spray. Five. Astronaut. Six. Frustrated. Seven. Espresso. Eight. Newsprint. Unit four. Page forty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Listen and circle the words with spr and underline the words with str. Then say the sentences. One. In my family, all the traditions of our ancestors are strictly followed. Two. The custom of saying hello to strangers has spread through our community. Three. In our district, it's the custom. For residents to sweep the streets on Saturday mornings. Four. That film strip really highlighted our customs and traditions. Five. Parents usually want their offspring's to follow the family traditions. Unit four. Page forty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to Mai's presentation, and complete the table with no more than three words from the recording. Today I'm going to tell you about the Sway dance, a traditional dance of the Thai ethnic group in Vietnam. Thai people have followed this spiritual tradition for generations. The Sway dance expresses people's work in life and wishes for a happy and wealthy life. It is performed in both public and private gatherings, such as celebrations. Festivals or family reunions. The swear dance has more than thirty forms, based on the first six ancient forms. The most popular form is the swear vum, or circle dance, 
because it expresses social unity. People, young or old alike, join hands to make a circle around the fire and dance to the music. Besides the circle dance, there are dances with conical hats, paper fans or scarves. Old people say they shouldn't break with this tradition because it reflects Thai culture and lifestyle. As a Thai folk song goes, without the swear dance, the rice won't grow and people won't get married. Unit 4 Page 45 Skills 2 Listening Activity 3 Listen again and tick true or false. Today I'm going to tell you about the Sue dance, a traditional dance of the Thai ethnic group in Vietnam. Thai people have followed this spiritual tradition for generations. The Sue dance expresses people's work in life and wishes for a happy and wealthy life. It is performed in both public and private gatherings, such as celebrations, festivals or family reunions. The swear dance has more than 30 forms based on the first six ancient forms. The most popular form is the swear vum or circle dance because it expresses social unity. People young or old alike join hands to make a circle around the fire and dance to the music. Besides the circle dance, there are dances with conical hats, paper fans or scarves. Old people say they shouldn't break with this tradition because it reflects Thai culture and lifestyle. As a Thai folk song goes, without the swear dance, the rice won't grow and people won't get married. Unit 4 Page 43 Communication Activity 3 Now, listen to Nick giving a presentation on table manners in Britain and check your answers. In the UK, we eat around the dining table. We follow lots of table manners. Firstly, we use cutlery. You know, knives, forks and spoons to eat most of the food. We hold the fork in the left hand and the knife in the right. You should hold the handle of the knife in your palm and your fork in the other hand with the prongs pointing downwards. There is also a spoon and a fork for dessert. When you finish eating, you should place your knife and fork with the prongs upwards on your plate. Secondly, you should never use your own cutlery to take more food from the serving dish. Use the serving spoon. Now, if there's bread on the table, you can use your hands to take a piece. Then, break off a small piece of bread and butter it. Thirdly, if you are a guest, you have to wait until the host or hostess starts eating and you should ask another person to pass the food. Next, never chew with your mouth open 
and don't talk with food in your mouth. Unit 5 Festivals in Vietnam Page 48 Getting started Activity 1 Listen and read. Hey, I'm visiting Vietnam this spring. I really want to see a festival there. Really? Well, how about the Hue Festival? What's that? And when is it? It's in April. There's lots to see. A grand opening ceremony, an Ao Yai fashion show, a Dem Phuong Dong or Oriental night show, royal court music performances and sporting activities like human chess, boat races. Sounds great! How about festivals in February or March? Well, there's the Tut holiday. Why don't you come for that? Are you sure? But it's your family reunion. Sure! Come and join the celebration. To welcome Tut, we prepare a five-fruit tray and make jam and chunk cakes. It's hard to explain on the phone. Just come. You won't regret it. Thanks, Zung. Yes. Then, on the twelfth day of the first lunar month, I'll take you to Bac Ninh province, which is north of Hanoi, to see the Lim Festival. Slow down, Zung. The what festival? Lim. There's traditional Quan Ha singing, which is performed on dragon boats, and folk games, like swinging on huge bamboo swings, wrestling. Unit 5 Page 50 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 4 B. Now listen and repeat the words. Competition, commemoration, procession, preservation, confusion, magician. Musician, vegetarian, companion. Unit 5, page 50. A closer look, 1. Pronunciation. Activity 5 Listen and stress the words below. Pay attention to the endings. 1. Procession 2. Companion 3. Production Four, competition. Five, politician. Six, musician. Seven, historian. Eight, librarian. Unit 5 Page 53 Communication Activity 2 Now listen to an interview between a TV reporter and a man about a festival to check your answers. <laughs> Good 
morning. Can I ask you some questions about this festival? Yes, of course. What is the festival called? Ok Bom Bop. It's held by our ethnic group in Shop Chang on the fourteenth and fifteenth evenings of the tenth lunar month. Who do you worship at the festival? Our moon god. We thank him for giving us a good harvest and plenty of fish in the rivers. What do you do during the festival? First, we have a worshiping ceremony at home under the bamboo archway, or at the pagoda. When the moon appears, the old pray to the moon god, and the children raise their clasped hands to the moon. Sounds great. So, what are the offerings? Green rice flakes, coconuts, potatoes. And pear cakes. Do you do any other activities after that? Sure. Then we float beautiful paper lanterns on the river, and the next evening we hold thrilling dragon boat races. Unit five. Page fifty-three. Communication. Activity three. Listen to the interview again and complete the table below with the answers to the suggested questions. Good morning. Can I ask you some questions about this festival? Yes, of course. What is the festival called? Ok Bom Bop. It's held by our ethnic group in Shop Chang on the fourteenth and fifteenth evenings of the tenth lunar month. Who do you worship at the festival? Our moon god. We thank him for giving us a good harvest and plenty of fish in the rivers. What do you do during the festival? First, we have a worshiping ceremony at home under the bamboo archway, or at the pagoda. When the moon appears, the old pray to the moon god, and the children raise their clasped hands to the moon. Sounds great. So, what are the offerings? Green rice flakes, coconuts, potatoes, and pear cakes. Do you do any other activities after that? Sure. Then we float beautiful paper lanterns on the river, and the next evening we hold thrilling dragon boat races. Unit five. Page fifty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to a tour guide giving information about the Zom Festival, and circle the correct answer, A, B. Or C. The Zum Festival is celebrated every year in Funling Commune, Shoksan District, Hanoi. This festival commemorates the hero Saint Gyeong. He is considered a mythical hero because he grew from a three-year-old child. Into a giant overnight. He is worshipped for defending the country from foreign invaders, the An. Although this festival is held from the sixth to the twelfth day of the fourth lunar month, people start preparing traditional clothing for the procession and for various festival performances one month beforehand. During the festival, the procession starts at the Mother Temple, and goes to Tung Temple, where a religious ceremony is performed. When night falls, a Tiao play is performed. Then the festivities end with a Thanksgiving procession on the twelfth. This festival shows our love for the motherland and the preservation of our cultural heritage. Unit five. 
Page fifty five. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen to the talk again, and write answers to the questions below. The Zum Festival is celebrated every year in Funling Commune, Shoksan District, Hanoi. This festival commemorates the hero Saint Gyeong. He is considered a mythical hero because he grew from a three-year-old child into a giant overnight. He is worshipped for defending the country from foreign invaders, the An. Although this festival is held from the sixth to the twelfth day of the fourth lunar month, people start preparing traditional clothing for the procession and for various festival performances one month beforehand. During the festival, the procession starts at the Mother Temple and goes to Tung Temple, where a religious ceremony is performed. When night falls. A chow play is performed. Then the festivities end with a thanksgiving procession on the twelfth. This festival shows our love for the motherland and the preservation of our cultural heritage. Unit six. Folk tales. Page fifty-eight. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. I phoned you around nine p.m. last night, but no reply. Oh, I was doing some internet research on Vietnamese legends for my project. Have you found one you like yet? Not really. Can you suggest anything? We have lots of legends, folk tales, and fables. A popular one is the legend of Lac Long Wung and Ao Ke. Oh yeah, what's it about? Well, it's about the origins of the Vietnamese people. Who are the main characters? Lac Long Wung, the Dragon King of the Ocean, Ao Ke, a fairy, and their sons. And what's the story? Let me see. Lac Long Wung married Ao Ke. She gave birth to a bag of one hundred eggs. Which produced one hundred baby boys. One hundred baby boys—that's a lot. And some years later, Lac Long Wung missed the sea, so he took fifty of their sons to the sea, and Ao Ke took the others to the mountains. Those boys were the ancestors of the Vietnamese. What an interesting legend it is! I think I found the subject of my project. Unit six, page fifty-nine. Getting started. Activity two. Match the words with their definitions. Then, listen, check, and repeat. One. A very old traditional story from a particular place that was originally passed on to people in a spoken form, fable. Two. An ancient story about brave people or magical events that are probably not true. Fairy tale. Three. An imaginary story, typically involving magic or fairies, usually for children. Folk tale. Four. Traditional imaginary short story that teaches a moral lesson, typically using animal characters. Legend.
Unit six. Page sixty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat the sentences, paying attention to intonation. Do they have rising or falling intonation? One. What a colourful hat she is wearing. Two. What a time we had today. Three. What beautiful eyes she has. Four. What a nice day it is. Five. What good news it is. Unit six. Page sixty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Practice these sentences. Then listen and repeat. One. What a beautiful princess she is. Two. What brave knights they are. Three. What a big nose the wolf has. Four. What a fierce ogre it is. Five. What a handsome prince he is. Unit six. Page sixty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Listen to the fairy tale, the princess and the dragon, and correct the following statements. Once upon a time. There was a king and a queen who lived in a castle with their beautiful daughter. One night, an ugly ogre captured the princess, and put her in his tall, dark tower. The king and the queen were very sad. They promised to give gold to the knight that rescued the princess. Many knights wanted to rescue her. But they all ran away when they reached the tower and saw the ogre roaring with anger. One day, a dragon was flying over the tower when he heard the princess cry for help. The dragon flew down to the tower, took a big fiery breath, and blew the ogre far away. The dragon rescued the princess from the tower. And gently put her on his strong back. They flew back to the castle. The king and the queen were so happy. The dragon turned into a handsome prince and married the princess. They all lived happily ever after. Unit six. Page sixty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen again.
Fill in the missing words. Once upon a time, there was a king and a queen who lived in a castle with their beautiful daughter. One night, an ugly ogre captured the princess, and put her in his tall, dark tower. The king and the queen were very sad. They promised to give gold to the knight that rescued the princess. Many knights wanted to rescue her. But they all ran away when they reached the tower and saw the ogre roaring with anger. One day, a dragon was flying over the tower when he heard the princess cry for help. The dragon flew down to the tower, took a big fiery breath, and blew the ogre far away. The dragon rescued the princess from the tower. And gently put her on his strong back. They flew back to the castle. The king and the queen were so happy. The dragon turned into a handsome prince and married the princess. They all lived happily ever after. Unit seven. Pollution. Page six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Your home village is so beautiful. There are so many trees, flowers, and birds. Yes, that's why I like coming back here on holiday. Me, what's that factory? It looks new. I don't know. There wasn't a factory here last year. Me, look at the lake. Its water is almost black. Let's go closer. I can't believe my eyes. The fish are dead. I think the waste from the factory has polluted the lake. The fish have died because of the polluted water. That's right. If the factory continues dumping poison into the lake. All the fish and other aquatic animals will die. True. Bless you. What's the matter? Thanks. True. I think there's air pollution here as well. If the air wasn't dirty, I wouldn't sneeze so much. True. I've come up with an idea about our environmental project. How about giving a presentation about water and air pollution? That's a good idea. Let's take some pictures of the factory and the lake to illustrate our presentation. Achoo! Unit seven. Page nine. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen. And mark the stress in each word, then repeat it. One, artistic. Two, athletic. Three, historic. Four, historical. Five, logical. Six, physical. Seven, heroic. Eight, poetic. Nine, botanic. Ten, botanical. Unit seven. Page nine. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Underline the words 
ending in ik and circle the words ending in al in the following sentences. Mark the stress in each word. Listen and check your answers. Then repeat the sentences. 1. According to scientific research, tiny species may help clean radioactive pollution. 2. Water quality has become a national problem. 3. Many people have received medical treatment because of the disease. 4. Chemical waste can cause water pollution. 5. The reduction in air pollution was dramatic last year. Unit 7 Page 11 Communication Activity 3 Now, listen to a short presentation about noise pollution. How many correct answers have you got? Noise is constant and loud sound. To measure the loudness or volume of sounds, people use a unit called a decibel. When a sound is louder than 70 decibels, it can cause noise pollution. Do you know that the noise from a vacuum cleaner or a motorcycle can result in permanent hearing loss after eight hours? The sounds of a concert are even more serious. They can reach as high as 130 decibels and may cause immediate and permanent hearing loss. Noise pollution can also lead to headaches and high blood pressure. If you are listening to music through headphones and other people can hear it, it means the music is too loud and unsafe. If there seems to be a ringing or buzzing in your ears, it means the noise is affecting you and damaging your hearing. Wearing earplugs when you go to concerts or other loud events, and listening to music through headphones or headsets at safe levels can help you reduce the effects of noise pollution. Unit 7 Page 13 Skills 2 Activity 1 Describe what you see in the pictures and talk about the relationship between them. Listen and check your answers. The first picture shows an algal bloom in coastal seawater. The second picture shows the cooling towers from a power station. They are both related to thermal pollution. Unit 7 Page 13 Skills 2 Activity 2 Listen to part of a conversation on TV between a reporter and an environmentalist about thermal pollution. Complete the diagram. Use no more than three words for each blank. Does thermal pollution mean that bodies of water get hotter, Mr Nam? Not always. Sometimes the water becomes colder, and that's also thermal pollution. In general, thermal pollution means a change in the water temperature. That's interesting. What causes it? Power stations are one factor. They use water in the nearby lakes or rivers to cool their equipment, which heats up the water. Then they dump the hot water back into its source. Are there any other causes? Yes. 
Thermal pollution may also happen due to the discharge of cold water from reservoirs into warm rivers. Thermal pollution can have dramatic effects, right? Certainly, most aquatic creatures need a certain temperature to survive. Warmer water has less oxygen in it, and this can harm fish populations. Besides, warmer water can cause harmful algal blooms. This can change the colour of the water, like in the first picture, and more seriously, the algae poisons the fish. What can we do, Mr. Nam? In many places, they build cooling towers, like in the second picture, to cool down the water from the power stations. Anything else we can do? Unit Eight: English-speaking countries. Page sixteen. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. How's your international summer camp going, Farm? Awesome, just awesome. You sound so happy. What do you like about it? It's hard to say. Everything's wonderful. The friends I've made, the places I've visited, the activities. Oh, your English has improved a lot. Absolutely. I use English every day with people from different countries. Where are they from? Everywhere. Places like India, Canada. English is also an official language here in Singapore. Right. Have you made any friends from English-speaking countries? I'm in a team with two boys from Australia and a girl from the USA. Do you have difficulty understanding them? I found it difficult to understand them at first. Perhaps it's because of their accent, but it's okay now. It's great that you can practice English with native speakers. When are you back? Our camp closes on July fifteenth, and I take the night flight home the same day. Looking forward to seeing you then. Enjoy. I will. Thanks. Bye. Unit eight. Page eighteen. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen and repeat the words. One. Cantonese. Two. Taiwanese. Three. Japanese. Four. Portuguese. Five. Employee. Six. Adoptee. Seven. Addressee. Eight. Interviewee. Unit eight. Page eighteen. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Mark the stress in the underlined words. Then listen and repeat the sentences. One. One fifth of the people in the world are Chinese. Two. A refugee is a person who is forced to leave a country. Three. My daughter is a trainee. Four. Japanese is the language of Japan. Five. This printer has a two-year guarantee. Unit eight. Page eighteen. 
A closer look. One. Vocabulary. Activity one. Write the names for the people who belong to these places. Then listen and repeat the words. One. The USA. The Americans. Two. England, the English. Three, Scotland, the Scottish, the Scots. Four, Wales, the Welsh. Five, Ireland, the Irish. Six, Canada, the Canadians. Seven, Australia, the Australians. Eight, New Zealand, the New Zealanders. Unit eight, page twenty-three. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. A tour guide is talking about the schedule for a day trip to Wanaka, a town in the far south of New Zealand. Listen and fill in the time for the schedule of events. Good morning. I hope you all had a good sleep. We are now heading for Wanaka. We arrive at the first destination, Puzzling World, at nine thirty. The first puzzling thing which welcomes you is the Leaning Tower. When you get inside the spacious cafe, you will find yourself among various wooden puzzles and games. The Illusion Room is a must-see. As there's nothing else like it in the world, Puzzling World is possibly the most photographed attraction in New Zealand. At twelve thirty, we leave for Lake Wanaka, New Zealand's fourth largest lake. This natural paradise has something for everyone. Adventure lovers may follow the biking and walking tracks through the park. Relaxation seekers may stay by the lake. Taking a boat ride, or just sitting and watching its changing beauty. We meet up at four o'clock, and the bus leaves at exactly four fifteen. I hope. Unit eight. Page twenty-three. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen again and choose the right answer, A, B, or C. Good morning. I hope you all had a good sleep. We are now heading for Wanaka. We arrive at the first destination, Puzzling World, at nine thirty. The first puzzling thing which welcomes you is the Leaning Tower. When you get inside the spacious cafe, you will find yourself among various wooden puzzles and games. The Illusion Room is a must-see, as there's nothing else like it in the world. Puzzling World is possibly the most photographed attraction in New Zealand. At twelve thirty, we leave for Lake Wanaka, New Zealand's fourth largest lake. This natural paradise has something for everyone. Adventure lovers may follow the biking and walking tracks through the park. Relaxation seekers may stay by the lake.
taking a boat ride, or just sitting and watching its changing beauty. We meet up at four o'clock, and the bus leaves at exactly four fifteen. I hope. Unit nine. Natural disasters. Page twenty six. Getting started. Activity one. Listen, and read. Did you watch the news last night? No, I didn't. What's happened? There was a typhoon in Namdin Province. What exactly is a typhoon? We don't get them in England. It's a severe tropical storm. Oh no, that's terrible. What time did it hit the area? They said at about ten a.m. Was anyone injured? Only a few minor injuries were reported. Most people had moved to safe areas when the storm broke. That's a relief. Did it cause any damage to property? It seems many houses and public buildings were destroyed or flooded, and thousands of people were left homeless. That's awful. Despite all the modern technology available to us, we're still helpless against natural disasters. How is the government helping the people there? They've sent rescue workers to free people who were trapped in flooded homes. Once the heavy rain stops, they'll start clearing up the debris. Medical supplies, food, and rescue equipment have also been sent. That's great. How about the people left without homes? They've been taken to a safe place where temporary accommodation will be provided for them. Unit nine. Page twenty-seven. Getting started. Activity two A. Write the responses into the correct columns. Then listen, check, and repeat. Responding to good news. Wow. That's great. That's a relief. How wonderful! That's awesome. Responding to bad news. Oh dear. That's awful. How terrible. Oh no. That's shocking. Unit nine, page twenty-seven. Getting started. Activity three. Match the natural disasters with the pictures. Then listen, check your answers, and repeat. Can you add more? One, C, flood. Two, D, forest fire. Three, F, tsunami. Four, B, tornado. Five, G. Mudslide. Six. A. Volcanic eruption. Seven. H. Drought. Eight. E. Earthquake. Unit nine. Page twenty-eight. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat these words. Pay attention to the stressed syllables. 
technology, photography, ecology, biology, apology, biography, geography, psychology, Unit 9 Page 28 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 5 Listen and mark the stress on the correct syllable in the words below. Pay attention to logi and graphy. 1. Sociology 2. Zoology 3. Bibliography 4. Climatology 5. Astrology 6. Demography Unit 9 Page 28 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 6 Read the following sentences and mark the stressed syllable in the underlined words. Then, listen and repeat the sentences. 1. We are studying the geography of Asia. 2. I had a biology lesson this afternoon. 3. They share a common interest in photography. 4. A biography is a book that tells the story of someone's life, written by someone else. 5. Zoology is the scientific study of animals and their behaviour. Unit 9 Page 28 A Closer Look 1 Vocabulary Activity 1 Fill in each blank with a suitable verb in the correct form from the box below. Then listen, check and repeat. 1. Yesterday, a terrible storm struck the rural area of Haiyang province. 2. Villagers rushed into public shelters as soon as the volcano erupted. 3. Hundreds of buildings were completely destroyed when the earthquake shook the city. 4. The mudslide buried the whole village while people were still sleeping in their houses. 5. The forest fire raged for 8 hours and some animals were badly injured or killed. 6. We managed to run out of the house into the street before the walls collapsed. Unit 9 Page 28 A Closer Look 1 Vocabulary Activity 2 Match the verbs in column A to the nouns in column B.
Then listen, check, and repeat. One, scatter debris. Two, take shelter. Three, evacuate the village. Four, provide aid. Five, put out the forest fire. Unit nine. Page thirty one. Communication. Activity one. Listen to a radio program on fourteen news. Then, fill in the gaps with the words you hear. <laughs> Welcome to Nature and You. Today, we have asked our listeners around the world to call us to express their views on these two questions: Are there more natural disasters now than there were in the past? And are we prepared to deal with natural disasters? Hi, I'm Sarah from Sydney, Australia. I think there are more natural disasters now than there used to be. Whenever I watch the news on TV, I see places that are flooded or affected by drought. I'm certain this is the result of climate change and global warming. Hello, I'm Peter from London, England. I don't think there are more natural disasters now than in the past, but more are being reported on the news in shorter time periods. We've seen them so often on the news that we've become used to them. Hi, everyone. I'm Nobita from Tokyo, Japan. I think recent earthquakes and tsunamis just show how unprepared we are to deal with them. Despite all the technology and knowledge available to us nowadays, many people become victims of natural disasters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lin from Hanoi, Vietnam. I don't think we can prepare for natural disasters, as nobody knows when or where they are going to strike. It's nature's way of reminding us who is in charge, and that we should show more respect to the natural environment. Unit nine, page thirty-three. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Listen to the news report and correct the following statements. Nghệ An province was badly affected again when a typhoon hit the area last night. The storm began at around 11 p.m. and raged throughout the night. Dozens of people were seriously injured, and hundreds of others were left homeless. The severe winds caused extensive damage to property, including homes and businesses, particularly in Kuala, a coastal town in Nian. The storm had already weakened by the time emergency workers arrived in the area. Rescue operations have started, and many people trapped in collapsed or damaged buildings have been freed. Workers are now clearing up the debris left behind by the severe storm. The government has already sent rescue equipment to Nian, as well as food and medical supplies. People left homeless have been taken to safe areas, where temporary accommodation will be built to house them. The Weather Bureau has issued flood warnings for Nian and nearby provinces, as heavy rain is expected to continue over the next few days. Unit nine, page thirty-three. Skills two. Listening. 
Activity 2. Listen again and complete the data chart. Nian province was badly affected again when a typhoon hit the area last night. The storm began at around 11 p.m. and raged throughout the night. Dozens of people were seriously injured and hundreds of others were left homeless. The severe winds caused extensive damage to property, including homes and businesses, particularly in Kuala, a coastal town in Nian. The storm had already weakened by the time emergency workers arrived in the area. Rescue operations have started, and many people trapped in collapsed or damaged buildings have been freed. Workers are now clearing up the debris left behind by the severe storm. The government has already sent rescue equipment to Nian, as well as food and medical supplies. People left homeless have been taken to safe areas, where temporary accommodation will be built to house them. The Weather Bureau has issued flood warnings for Nian and nearby provinces as heavy rain is expected to continue over the next few days. Unit 10 Communication Page 38 Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. Hi Nick. What happened today? We were waiting for ages and you never showed up. Hi Foot. Well, I wanted to ask you the same question. Why? We planned to meet outside the cinema, didn't we? We waited and then Mai decided to go in without you. She didn't want to miss the start of Frozen, you know. Did you oversleep or something? No, I was there on time and it was me who waited for you two. Are you kidding? We didn't see you there. We tried to call you but couldn't get through. I couldn't call you either. My battery was flat. Never mind. We can try again. How about this Sunday afternoon at 2.30pm? There's Superman 3. Great, but I'll be having my Vietnamese class then. Let's go for the 4.15pm show. I'll need to take the bus to Win Yu Street and it's quite far. But it's not Galaxy Win Yu. We'll be seeing it at Galaxy Win Chai. Wait, which cinema did you go to today? Oh no, I went to Galaxy Win Yu. I wish my mobile phone had a better battery. Unit 10, page 39, getting started, activity 2, match the words and phrases with the photos about ways of communication, then listen to check your answers. 1. Having a video conference. 2. Emailing 3. Video chatting 4. Meeting face-to-face -face. 5. Using social media 6. Using telepathy 7. Sending letters Snail Mail Unit 10 Page 41 A Closer Look 1 Pronunciation Activity 5 Mark the stress for the following words, then listen and repeat. 1. Competitive 
two. Infinitive. Three. Repetitive. Four. Positive. Five. Ability. Six. Possibility. Seven. Curiosity. Eight. Nationality. Unit ten. Page forty one. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Fill the gaps with the words in five, and practice saying the sentences. Then listen and check. One. What's his nationality? He's Japanese. Two. Try not to use this word too often, otherwise your text will become repetitive. Three. Sport can be either competitive or non-competitive. Four. There's a good possibility that they will win. Five. Her dancing ability is impressive. Unit ten. Page forty-one. A closer look. Two. Activity one. Listen again to part of the conversation in getting started. Underline the future continuous tense and answer the questions. How about this Sunday afternoon at two thirty p.m.? There's Superman three. Great, but I'll be having my Vietnamese class then. Let's go for the four fifteen p.m. show. I'll need to take the bus to Win Yu Street, and it's quite far. But it's not Galaxy Win Yu. We'll be seeing it Galaxy Win Chai. Unit ten. Page forty-five. Skills two. Activity three. Listen again to the interview, and complete the following grid. Doctor Minvo, what exactly is netiquette? The word is a combination of net and etiquette. It's a set of rules for behaving properly online. Could you tell us the main rule of netiquette? Remember. That the people we're communicating with online are real people. Don't say and do unpleasant things online, just like in real life. But sometimes, perhaps it's not what we communicate, but how we communicate. Absolutely. For example, if you write emails or post comments using caps lock, this means you are shouting at people. Of course, it's not polite at all. What else should we do when sending emails? Check your message for spelling mistakes before you send it. It shows respect towards the other person. Don't use too much shorthand. This may confuse your reader. How about behavior in chat rooms and on message boards? Follow discussion rules. Use polite language. People may not know who you are, but you're judged by the quality of your writing. Unit ten. Page forty-five. Skills two. Activity two. Listen to this interview between a fourteen magazine reporter and Dr. Min Vu about netiquette, and answer the questions. Doctor Minvo, what exactly is netiquette? The word is a combination of net and etiquette. 
It's a set of rules for behaving properly online. Could you tell us the main rule of netiquette? Remember that the people we're communicating with online are real people. Don't say and do unpleasant things online, just like in real life. But sometimes, perhaps it's not what we communicate, but how we communicate. Absolutely. For example, if you write emails or post comments using caps lock, this means you are shouting at people. Of course, it's not polite at all. What else should we do when sending emails? Check your message for spelling mistakes before you send it. It shows respect towards the other person. Don't use too much shorthand. This may confuse your reader. How about behaviour in chat rooms and on message boards? Follow discussion rules. Use polite language. People may not know who you are, but you're judged by the quality of your writing. Unit Eleven. Science and Technology. Page forty-eight. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Young Nick and Cho are talking with Dr. Nelson after listening to his talk about the roles of science and technology in the twenty-first century. Well, as you know, developments in science and technology are greatly changing the way we live, communicate, travel, everything. You mean science and technology are changing our lives in every field? Right. For the better? Mostly for the better. Science and technology also have enormous effects on economic development. Well, my dad told me that only robots would work in factories and clean our homes in the future. Is it right, Doctor Nelson? Sure, and we'll have flying cars and spaceships, so that we can travel faster and further than before. So we won't have traffic jams any more. No, we won't. Science and technology are the keys to development in other fields too. They will certainly bring a lot more benefits to people. And what about education? Our science teacher said that there would be no more schools. We just stay at home and learn on the internet. That's right. Students won't go to school like now. Wow! I hope that happens soon. Unit Eleven. Page fifty-one. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat the following words. Mark the stressed syllables in the words. Unforeseen. Impatient. Impossible. Unlucky. Unhealthy. Unlimited. Immature. Impure, unnatural, unwise, unhurt, impolite. Unit Eleven, page fifty-one. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Fill the gaps with one of the words in five. Listen and check. Then read the sentences. One. The teacher said this water was impure and couldn't be used in our experiment. Two. Scientists have identified a link between an unhealthy diet and diseases. Three. This job would be impossible without the help of a computer. Four. 
our natural resources are not unlimited. Five. It's no good being impatient with small children. Unit Eleven, Page Fifty Five. Skills Two. Listening. Activity One. Listen to the conversation and choose the best summary. Hey, Zung and Chow. Do you remember Dr. Nelson's talk on science and technology? Yes, he said that science and technology would help us solve the world's problems in the future. Right, I think world hunger is a problem now, and developing ways to get high yields in farming will help feed the growing population on Earth. Good point. Also, we may be able to live on other planets, so overcrowding won't be a problem anymore. And I like the idea of having lessons at home, with a robot and on the internet, and no more paper books. We'll have e-books and tablets for everything. That doesn't sound like a benefit to me. I'd still want to go to school. I'd like to communicate face to face with teachers and friends. In my opinion, science and technology will bring new problems to people. Like what? Well, robots will bring unemployment. And high yields in farming may destroy the environment, and sending people to Mars may cause pollution. You're right. So many new problems. Unit Eleven. Page fifty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen again to the conversation between Nick, Yung, and Cho. Circle the words and phrases as you hear them. Hey, Zung and Cho, do you remember Dr. Nelson's talk on science and technology? Yes, he said that science and technology would help us solve the world's problems in the future. Right, I think world hunger is a problem now. And developing ways to get high yields in farming will help feed the growing population on Earth. Good point. Also, we may be able to live on other planets, so overcrowding won't be a problem anymore. And I like the idea of having lessons at home with a robot and on the internet. And no more paper books. We'll have e-books and tablets for everything. That doesn't sound like a benefit to me. I'd still want to go to school. I'd like to communicate face to face with teachers and friends. In my opinion, science and technology will bring new problems to people. Like what? Well, robots will bring unemployment, and high yields in farming may destroy the environment, and sending people to Mars may cause pollution. You're right. So many new problems. Unit Eleven. Page fifty-five. Skills two. Listening. Activity three. Listen again and answer the questions. Hey, Zung and Chow, do you remember Dr. Nelson's talk on science and technology? Yes. He said that science and technology would help us solve the world's problems in the future. Right, I think world hunger is a problem now, and developing ways to get high yields in farming will help feed the growing population on Earth. Good point. Also, we may be able to live on other planets, so overcrowding won't be a problem anymore. And I like the idea of having lessons at home with a robot and on the internet. And no more paper books. We'll have e-books and tablets for everything. That doesn't sound like a benefit to me. I'd still want to go to school. I'd like to communicate face to face with teachers and friends. In my opinion, science and technology will bring new problems to people. Like what? Well, robots will bring unemployment, 
and high yields in farming may destroy the environment, and sending people to Mars may cause pollution. You're right. So many new problems. Unit Twelve: Life on Other Planets. Page fifty-eight. Getting started. Activity One. Listen and read. Do you know Chan and I saw a very interesting film yesterday? What was it? Star Trek Into Darkness. Oh, I like this series, but I've only seen Star Trek two thousand and nine. What's Into the Darkness about? Well, after their adventures on the journey to Nibiru Planet in Star Trek two thousand and nine. Captain James Kirk and his crew return to Earth on the Enterprise in 2259. However, they then have to fight a dangerous terrorist, John Harrison, who wants to destroy Earth. Sounds thrilling. Yes, it was. Actually, Kirk dies trying to stop him, but fortunately, he comes back to life. It's just a film, after all. A happy ending, but it does make me think about the real world. Could Earth ever be in that kind of danger? That's funny. Cham also asked me what I thought could happen to Earth in the future. And how did you answer? I said I didn't know, but that Earth might be run by aliens. <laughs> That's true. Nobody knows. Unit twelve. Page fifty nine. Getting started. Activity two. Use the words and phrases in the box to label the pictures. Then listen and repeat. One, aliens. Two, space buggy. Three, UFO. Four, weightless. Five. Galaxy. Six, spaceship. Seven, solar system. Eight, planet. Unit twelve. Page sixty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Put the stress in the correct place in the words. Then listen and check. Thoughtless. Meaningless. Useless. Meaningful. Helpful. Plentiful, helpless, thoughtful, useful. Unit twelve, page sixty. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Read the following sentences and mark the stressed syllable on the words in italics. Then listen and repeat. One. Her speech on the environment was meaningful. Two. My teacher is so helpful when we don't understand something. Three. I was helpless to stop the dog biting me. Four. This dictionary is so useful. Five. There is plentiful water for life on Earth.
Unit Twelve, Page Sixty Five, Skills Two, Activity Three. Listen again, and tick true, false, or not given. I think the inhabitants of Jupiter may be very different to human beings. This is how I imagine them. They may be much bigger and more powerful than humans. Jupiterians may have eight legs and be able to move very fast. They may have a lot of hair all over their bodies, and their skin might be very thick, so they can live in temperatures of around minus one hundred and forty-five degrees Celsius. They may have four eyes and be able to see very far. They may also have a very good sense of smell, and they may even be able to sense others' feelings like happiness or fear. And I don't think they eat and drink like us. Instead, they get all their energy from the rocks. They may charge their bodies by plugging their feet into the rock, just like charging a battery. That way, they don't even need to breathe air. The only way they may be similar to us is they live in family units of parents and children. They may also use language to communicate with each other. Unit twelve, page sixty-five. Skills two. Activity two. Listen to Tom's imagined description. Of what an alien from another planet may be like. Fill each blank with no more than three words from the recording. I think the inhabitants of Jupiter may be very different to human beings. This is how I imagine them. They may be much bigger and more powerful than humans. Jupiterians may have eight legs and be able to move very fast. They may have a lot of hair all over their bodies, and their skin might be very thick, so they can live in temperatures of around minus one hundred and forty-five degrees Celsius. They may have four eyes and be able to see very far. They may also have a very good sense of smell, and they may even be able to sense others' feelings like happiness or fear. And I don't think they eat and drink like us. Instead, they get all their energy from the rocks. They may charge their bodies by plugging their feet into the rock, just like charging a battery. That way, they don't even need to breathe air. The only way they may be similar to us is they live in family units of parents and children. They may also use language to communicate with each other.